Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com, and in this episode, we're going to cover the retouch for this portrait. Uh, this portrait was submitted by Ryan Phillips out of the UK, and in the last tutorial, we already covered the basic adjustments. So if you guys haven't done that yet, go check out the basic color corrected adjustments to get it, this photo to the point that it's at now. So basically, here's what we started with in the last photo, we brought it to this point. Now let's go through the retouch on how we would retouch this photo in Lightroom. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start with a, a brush. So we're going to bring up our adjustments brushes. And what we're going to do is we can reset this out, hit Alt and then hit Reset. Just make sure everything's reset out. Make sure your size is, well, we're just going to, we're going to adjust the size as we go. But make sure your feather and flow are both at 100 and the density is at 100 as well. And your auto mask is turned off because we don't want to create, auto masking can create some funky masking effects where you don't intend. So we're just going to leave it off for now. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a general clarity and sharpness adjustment down. And uh, I'm going to draw it all over her skin. We're going to clean it up in one second. Uh, so we're just going to draw this in first. And then you guys will notice that I'm going to actually, and what we're going to, I'm going to do actually to, so you guys can see this better is we're going to hit O to show our mask. And we're going to put this right over her skin. And then after we're done, we're going to actually clean it up and remove it from the areas that we don't want it to be. So that is fine right there. And we're also going to adjust the overall effect afterwards. So let's hit Alt now. And then I'm going to adjust my size by moving my mouse wheel down. And then we're going to just paint over the areas while holding Alt that we don't want to be covered. So I'm just going to remove it from the hair. I don't want to remove any detail from the hair area. Um, because that feather is up nice and high, the edge is going to be really, really mild anyway. So if it's covering a little bit of the hair or if it's going a little bit over, it's OK because it's not really going to be noticeable. It's a very soft edge. So I'm just going to go over the hair. I'm just using my mouse, but uh, I have a, uh, a Wacom tablet. I think it is pronounced Wacom. I actually just learned that recently. I always thought it was Wacom. But anyway, I kind of like Wacom better anyway. But um, So I have a Wacom tablet, but I'm, I'm really just used to using the mouse. So I get asked that a lot if I use the tablet or if I use the mouse. And more often than not, I'm just using the mouse because it's kind of just easier. Uh, I accidentally removed a little bit too much on the neck area. I'm just going to add that back and just redo that right there. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit back on this side too. As you guys are making adjustments, you can shrink the brush and go back and add back in certain areas and stuff like that. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to hit spacebar to zoom in. I'm going to hit spacebar and click actually to zoom in. And then we're going to remove it off this hair strand. I want to remove off the eyebrows. And we're just holding Alt as we're removing this mask. Uh, from certain areas. So we don't want to cover hair. We don't want to cover the eyes. We want to leave the eyes fully sharp and intact. We're just going to remove off the eyelashes mostly. And that is great right there. Let's go over. I'm hitting space and then I'm dragging across on my image. I'm going to move it from this eyebrow and then from the hair on this side. I'm sorry, from the eyes on this side, not the hair. And the eyelashes. I want to be careful not to get too much skin. Um, not to uncover too much skin, because if we unmask too much skin, it's going to be noticeable where you'll, you'll basically see where the detail is enhanced. So just kind of be careful with the, the mask and everything. I'm holding Alt. We're going to remove it from the lips, because we want the lips to be very sharp as well. OK. Move from the corners a little bit. If we go a little bit too far, just let go of Alt. Add it back on the areas that you subtracted out of, just like this corner. And that's great. I'm going to hit space and zoom back out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on this adjustment brush um, and then we're going to just take a look at our mask. It looks decent, but now what we need to do is actually adjust the effect. So let's get back into our brushes panel. Let's zoom out and let's click on this button so we can have this area highlighted. I'm going to hit O and then we're going to zoom in on the skin. And what we're going to do is just adjust the clarity and sharpness to a level that is appropriate for a general skin softening brush. So let's take it up, and here's what we're going to do. I'm going to adjust sharpness down until I s feel like it's kind of a satisfactory amount. Remember, I don't want to go too far. If I take it all the way down here, we get the porcelain skin, and it looks really kind of just not very good. So let's take it down a little bit. We just want to reduce some of the detail, but not want to diminish, but not remove. So that's fine right there. It looks great. We've done a good job reducing the detail, but we haven't completely removed it. I notice over here that it's a little bit sharper than I want because it looks like our mask wasn't covering that right side. So with this selected, I'm just going to go zoom back in right here. I'm going to hit O again to bring back up my mask. And let's just add a little bit of extra mask right there. And we can clean up that side just a tiny bit by removing it from the hair a little bit. 
and just kind of getting it cleaned up. I'm going to let you guys spend as much time as you guys want on this. We're going to kind of just do a quick job of it. You guys get the idea. Okay. That looks great, guys. We've done that basic adjustment. Um, and here is, so here's the before and after. If we click on this uh, little off and on adjustment, we can see the before and we can see the after. We've done a good job just smoothing it out a little bit. So if you guys like, you can take down the clarity a little bit more. We did a general clarity adjustment that adjusted clarity up. So what I might do is just pull clarity down a little bit more than it is right now, just to kind of flatten it out a little bit. All right, so that's good right there. Let's go and remove some of the uh, spots on the skin. So we're gonna hit the spot removal tool. You can also hit Q to get there. And we're just gonna remove some spots. Spots in certain areas like this are gonna be a little tricky to remove. You gotta make sure that you put the brush over an area that's similar and then kind of heal it out. If you have any issues, I would adjust the opacity so that it's not, it doesn't look like it's been cloned out basically. So we're just gonna keep going over different areas. I'm gonna take my opacity back up to 100 when I'm removing uh, like any spots on the skin type stuff because we don't need any, we don't really need to lower that opacity at all. We don't wanna show through any you know, pimples or any uh, dots on the skin or anything like that. So let's keep going. Her skin is actually almost flawless already so that's really quite easy. It's a good subject to practice on because there's not too much to get wrong. So let's keep going through. Uh, with certain items, you know, that I don't find distracting, like if it's a beauty mark or something like that, that it's just, it's part of her 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 look, I wouldn't remove it. Um, so I don't, I don't know if this is or not. It's really not that dark. Uh, it's not like a full beauty mark, so she might want it removed. But be careful when you're working with clients that do have beauty marks that are very distinct features because a lot of times, if you remove those features, when people see it, they're going to be like, okay, why don't you have your beauty mark? And it's kind of a dead giveaway that that image has been adjusted. So you want to only remove stuff that's unflattering. Um, if it's a flattering thing that kind of just adds to the look, just leave it in. So we're just removing some of these little spots. We don't have to do a perfect job. I just want to give you guys the idea. We're just going through, click on each. You'll notice that I'm adjusting the size with every single spot. I want the size to be just barely bigger than the spot. I don't want to keep the same size as I go because, uh, well, every spot is a different size. We want to make sure that the area that we're cloning is the smallest area possible. Um, the smaller the clone area that you're creating, the more realistic and the more uh, just kind of acceptable it'll look. If you make these areas too big, then it's going to really no uh, like be noticeable. You'll basically notice these circular, circular spots where areas have been cloned in. So we're just kind of keeping it small. I'm going to keep adjusting. And we're good right about here. I'm going to go back and adjust a little bit more on this eyebrow area. I'm picking areas that are the same shadows so it does a better area cloning. And if we want, we can remove this a little bit just by basically pulling from this left side. I'm going to clone in a tiny bit of this hair right here so it looks kind of realistic. But we'll get that little spot out. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. I think that's pretty good. We removed all of the noticeable spots on the face and let's move on now so now what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the eyes a little bit just pull the eyes out a little bit and then do some basic detail enhancement so let's start with the eyes first and here's what we're going to do i'm going to reset this out and what we're going to do is just adjust my exposure up a tip uh we'll go up to 0 0.6 just because i want you guys to see the the difference and then we're going to adjust it out in a second because we want to make sure that with these eye adjustments they're not too crazy so when you're doing, uh, when you're enhancing eyes, you want to make sure that you follow the highlights and the shadows, guys. Make sure that when you're brightening areas, you're brightening the the area where the light is falling, which is right here. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna zoom in even further. We're gonna go three to one, and then we're gonna just brighten the area where the light is falling. If we brighten the overall, like everything, it's gonna be pretty noticeable, and it's gonna be obvious that we didn't kind of follow the existing lighting. So it's just not going to look as convincing, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So let's hold Alt. Let's subtract it out of this side. We're going to subtract it out of any skin that we might have gone over. I don't need to enhance the corner of the eye. Um, there's no need to brighten that up. And let's check out our mask just real quick by hitting O. Make sure everything is pretty clean. This bottom area could be enhanced just a tiny bit. And that's great. Let's go over to our right side. And let's do the exact same thing. So you can see the shadows, these shadows are being cast by the eyelashes and stuff. And we want to kind of follow those and stay true to those. It'll look a lot more convincing if we do that. 
So let's do this. Once again, I'm going to hold Alt. We're going to subtract out of the skin areas. Just kind of clean up that mask. And that is great right there. Okay, now we're going to zoom out. We're going to hit O again. And now is when we're going to start adjusting the actual effect. Obviously, right now, this is way too powerful. So what I'm going to do is we're going to zoom to, uh, actually, 1 to 1 is still a little bit too close. Let's zoom back out. Uh, let's go back to fit. Okay. So let's take this down. We're going to go down to, like, say, 0.2, maybe 0.3. Uh, actually, I think 0.26 is a little bit better. Adjust a little bit of contrast up and then a little bit of additional clarity and a little bit of saturation. We'll add a little bit more. Okay, as we adjust these other items, we need to pull the exposure down because we're adding a lot more detail and you can tell that it pops too much. So let's pull the exposure down a little bit and uh, let's see what that looks like. So let's turn this off and then back on. There, that's a nice subtle whitening and it doesn't look like we've done too much to it. So that's great right there. Um, let's go with one more new adjustment brush. I'm going to hit new again. This time we're going to enhance the hair. I like to do this when a model has really great hair and it, there's a lot of detail you can bring out. So what we're going to do is reset this out again. I'm going to hold alt, hit reset. And then what we're going to do is bring this down to a clarity enhancement. So we're just going to boost our clarity. We're going to boost our sharpening. Let's take clarity up to 100. Let's take sharpening up to 37. We'll adjust it again in a second. So. I'm going to hit O again so we can see where our mask is going to appear and we're going to paint over the hair. Again, be careful, we just reduced the um, overall clarity and sharpness in the skin, so be sure not to cover skin when you're doing this. So we'll go through and we'll clean it up in just one sec after I get these basics kind of added in. So let's cover the hair, cover it all. And on this fringing area, we might need to be a little bit careful because, uh, on, I'm sorry, on the highlight area, we'll be, need to be a little bit careful just so we don't get any fringing from that added clarity. If we notice fringing, we can just remove it from that area, which is probably what I'm going to do right now because I'm pretty sure we will get some fringing there. So I'm just going to subtract out of the skin. Once again, that feather is on at 100% because I want to make sure that, you know, it has a very subtle uh, kind of fade to that effect. So it'll look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more like it hasn't been done in Photoshop. So, all right, that looks fine right there. So if I turn this off, you can see it has a really nice effect of just kind of subtly enhancing the, the overall hair detail. Now, if I want more, I can always add more by hitting a new brush, doing the exact same thing, and it's gonna add more. I'll let you guys decide on what you guys want. I think that's good for me, um, and I don't really need to add it to any extra. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is show you guys a little trick. Now, this by no means is kind of, this is a really a trick that I use just for, for speed. It's not the best way to do this, but a lot of times I go down into my detail and I'll actually do a little bit of what I call noise reduction skin smoothing. And basically what we're doing is by increasing noise reduction a bit, um, we're actually smoothing out the skin. Now, you're also killing a lot of detail, but it looks really nice on the skin and if you already have a little bit of sharpening added you've already done the clarity adjustment then like taking noise reduction up to 30 gives you a nice overall smoothing effect so it's something that I do kind of as a trick just to uh, quickly smooth skin out uh, without killing too much detail just be careful not to go up too high if you guys go up too high if you take it up to like 60s 80s then you'll notice that you get that porcelain looking kind of plasticky skin so don't take it up too high and that's a, a great adjustment for you guys to just get that quick softening effect I think we're great right now as far as the um, as far as the color correct or as far as the retouch goes. So let's add another snapshot, and we're going to call this retouched color corrected. I'm going to hit create, and then we're going to compare our before. So here's that before. Here's the after. We've done a nice job just kind of smoothing out the highlights, smoothing out the skin, removing any spots, adding detail to the hair and the eyes, and it looks great. So let's go on to the next tutorial where we're going to cover the vintage effect process.